Okay, so this is the first part of the second grammar units quiz review. Uh, we're gonna do the first four sentences on the front. In addition to your quiz review handout, you would will, um, will want for the quiz and for this, um, your unit two essential handout, right, with the um, imperative, exclamatory, and interrogative uh, to declarative form on the front and passive voice to active voice on the back. Um, and since we are also going to be charting these out, right, that's what we're going to do on here and we'll do on the quiz as well, the unit one handout with all the sentence patterns, sentence analysis process, prepositions, that will also be very useful for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. The candidates' positions on guns and abortion were being protested at the political rally. So we have to figure out what transformation was applied. We talked about in class, interrogatives easiest to find. There's going to be a question mark no question mark. Uh, exclamatory is the next easiest one. It's going to start with a what or how. doesn't start with a what or how, which leaves us with imperative. If you add you, it'll, it'll sound like it's changing from a command to a statement of fact. And then passive voice is the last one. Um, and we talked about in class, you know, you can look at the verb and things like that to figure out um, if it's passive voice. So you, the candidate's positions, on, no, that doesn't make sense. So it's passive voice. Okay, so that's our, that's our transformation passive voice. It's going to become active voice, but you want to write in the transformation box what's um, what actually it's in in the sentence. Okay. All right. So passive voice, um, we're going to transform the verb first. And so the candidates' positions on guns and abortion were being protested at the political rally. Our verb is were being protested. So remember, you're going to go from right to left. So the main verb is protest. And then we always add the B plus EN, right? So even though it looks like it's B plus ING, remember it's going to go backwards. So we add the EN ending, then we add the B. Um, we do have another B verb. So that is why we add in the ING ending, and that second B verb. And then you always look at the first word in the verb string to determine if it's present or past, and were is past tense. All right, so then when you rewrite, we have to cross out the B plus the E-N, and we're really going to end up with past tense of B and I-N-G of protest. So we'll have a two-word verb um, in, our, in our active voice sentence. Okay. All right, so now that we've done that transformation, we're going to look for a bi-prepositional phrase, because if it's not there, we have to add in a subject before we're going to be ready to flip our direct object and our subject and put our new verb in. So the candidate's positions on gun and abortion, or guns and abortion, were being protested at the political rally. We don't know who's doing the protesting, so we have to add in that bi-prepositional phrase by people. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to switch, okay? So we have people over here, and we have the candidate's positions, the guns and abortion, right, is part of that prepositional phrase. It's a compound object there, those two little noun phrases. And then we do have a, a prepositional phrase at the end at the political rally, but that's where they're doing the protest. It's adverbial. If it was adjectival, like which people, the ones at the political rally, it would have been omitted when people was deleted. Okay, I know that's a little weird, but that's why you don't have to ask yourself if it's adjectival or adverbial. If you add in the subject and it could then become, it, it's adverbial because otherwise it would have been omitted. Okay, all right, on guns and uh, abortion is telling us more information which positions, right? So that's going to move with the candidates. Uh, positions when we move it. All right, so then the the um, subject goes first, so people. Then we have past tense of be, right? So people is plural, so it's going to be uh, were. And then we have ing of protest, protesting. All right, so people were protesting. The candidate's positions on guns and abortion goes where people was. Okay. 
And then the, uh, the terminal prepositional phrase there at the end, at the political rally, it keeps its place, right? It, it keeps that emphasis. So then we are going to chart it out just like we did in the first um, unit. So find the verb. We're protesting, right? That's our verb. We want to look for our prepositional phrases, right? On guns and abortion is one. At the political rally is the next one. So then we're ready to draw our lines. Go across to the top row first, people's noun phrase one. The candidate's positions is different than people, so that's noun phrase two. Then we have, um, because we have a noun phrase two, we know we have a transitive verb, right? People's are subject. The positions are what's being protested, right? That makes that the direct object. And on guns and abortion, that we said was adjectival and at the political rally was adverbial. When the sentences get really complex, I don't usually like to draw the, the um, arrows. I feel like it gets really messy, uh, but don't forget, you have to identify the function of prepositional phrases to get full credit. If you circle it, you're only identifying the form, okay? All right, with a uh, single direct object, no indirect object, no object complement, because the protesting doesn't create this description of the positions, um, it is pattern seven. All right, number two, where is our family moving next week? All right, so we have to, um, we have to look at which, uh, which sentence um, transformation this has. It has the question mark, which makes it really easy. It's interrogative. So with an interrogative sentence transformation, you want to first check if it can be answered with a simple yes or no. Where is our family moving next week? Really can't. Um, because it has that WH question word, right? So what we're going to do is first replace the question word with an answer. So our family is moving to Florida. Okay. Um, once we've done that, we have to check, is it the subject? And it's not, right? Where is our family moving? The people doing the moving, that's our family, okay? So um, it's not the subject, so we have to find the verb, move the subject before the verb, right? Remember, it's usually in the middle somewhere. Where is my dog running, right? That's kind of one of the examples there. And then replace the question word um, and move it to where it belongs, okay? All right, so our, our verb is, is moving, and our family is kind of stuck in the middle there. So that's going to move to the beginning. Stick the verb back together, and to Florida then goes after your verb. It doesn't matter if it's before or after next week. Either, either kind of flows. Um, so our family... is moving to Florida next week. Okay, all right, so we're gonna chart this one out. Is moving is our verb. Uh, to Florida, prepositional phrase. Next week is not a prepositional phrase, right? So watch out for that, those, um, some of those little two word adverbs. Next to is a prepositional phrase, but next is not. Um, and so there was in uh, the first grammar unit, there was that little one page list of some of the, some of the um, adverbs. And uh, next week is one of those time adverbs that's uh, more than one word, but you're just gonna chart it out as a single adverb. So noun phrase one. And then we have um, to Florida is where, so that's an adverbial prepositional phrase. With only adverbs after our verb, we know that means it's intransitive and our family is the subject. So all your intransitive verbs are pattern six. Okay. All right, number three, what a serious problem and a hassle computer viruses are becoming. So that one um, doesn't have the question mark, but it does have that question mark, uh, question word, um, what. So that means it's exclamatory. So with exclamatory, you remove the what or how, find the verb in the subject, and then you move what was displaced back to the predicate, so after the verb. All right, so we're going to get rid of what or how. I'm not going to replace it, right, like the interrogative. We're just going to completely delete it. Um, so then we have, okay, what's our verb? Are becoming. So what are, we, what are we describing in this sentence or defining? Well, what we're de describing or defining is the computer viruses. So that's our subject, right? Are becoming is our verb. So then we have what's, what's before the subject, if it's not some introductory prepositional phrase or anything like that, um, 
that's going to be what we move. In this case, we have this uh, this kind of compound, a serious problem, um, whoops, and a hassle. Okay, so that's what we're going to move, and that will go after our verb. Okay, so let's rewrite it. So computer viruses. are becoming a serious problem and a hassle. Okay, sorry about that. I had a had a visitor. All right. So now we um, we have rewritten our sentence for number three. And so now we're ready to chart it out. Um, so we have our verb, right, are becoming. We don't have a prepositional phrase, but I always like to glue stuff together um, when I notice it. So with that coordinating conjunction and, you're going to connect the noun phrase before it, a serious problem with the noun phrase after it, a hassle, right? Remember, coordinating conjunctions are always going to link two things of the same type and any modifiers that are attached to them. We don't have any in this case because um, they're all embedded in that noun phrase. All right, so our becoming, put our, draw our lines uh, to the left and to the right, one down the midline there. Computer viruses is noun phrase one, our becoming, verb. And then we have a serious problem and a hassle is redefining the computer viruses. The serious problem is the same as the computer viruses. It's not a different thing. So that's also going to be noun phrase one. Remember, become is not the same as be. So this is going to be a linking verb. So we have computer viruses, our subject, a serious problem and a hassle. That's, that is a combined. So it's one noun phrase. That's our subject. Complement completes our understanding of the subject. All right, the transformation here we said um, was exclamatory. And the pattern with the linking verb and the noun phrase is five. Okay. All right, number four, lurk suspiciously on the neighbor's front porch tonight. So remember, no question, right? No, it doesn't start with what or how. Um, if you add you, even though it feels a little awkward, it does make sense. And so this is going to be imperative. Your quiz will be exactly like this with only one of each type. So to some degree, you can do process of elimination. All right, so the transformation here is imperative. So um, we're going to add the you. And I said in class, like, I'm okay with this if you just want to, you know, stick it over there and not rewrite it and just um, just uh, chart it out. That's totally fine. Save yourself a little bit of time. All right, so um, we do have in this, uh, prep in this sentence a prepositional phrase, right? On is a preposition. On what? Make sure you circle the entire object, but nothing else. Tonight is not part of that prepositional phrase. All right, so draw your lines. So you, we know, is noun phrase one. Suspiciously, right, L-Y is one clue, is an adverb. How are you lurking, right? That's one of our adverb questions. On the neighbor's front porch is where you're lurking. So that's another adverb. And tonight is when you're doing that action. That's why this feels awkward when we rewrite it, because you're declaring the future. Right, which we don't tend to do um, unless we're you know, super religious or philosophical um, or very mathematical, I guess. Um, and so, uh, so with only adverbial stuff, we know this is an intransitive verb. You is our subject. All right, put my function, there are adverbs in form, adverb and function. All right, and that means we have pattern six for that last sentence. So we have three and four, and then that was one and two. Okay. All right. So the next video will cover the um, sentences on the back. Make sure you kind of watch them both so that you are fully prepared for the quiz. Good luck.